Frohr. Сейчас, минутку. Вы... А, вы уже работали, уже мы в эфире. Я вот могу листать вот да. это туда-сюда, а влево-вправо. То же самое. Туда же. Угу. Хорошо, можно начинать. Let's start, my dear colleagues. Good afternoon. My name is Vladimir Alexandrovich, surname Chabanov. I am docent of urological department. And now we will discuss a very important discipline, which uh, is very often in our patients. Urinary stone disease, and independently on your future specialities, you will meet this category of patients. But re uh, registration continues. Not all students are ready to listen to our lecture, and few uh, words uh, about uh, organization of our lessons. Uh, when you visit our cycle, our cycle of urology, first lesson you must be preparing already. I recommend you textbooks uh, write by Shinkus. These textbooks are enough in our library. And uh, first lesson you must prepare symptomatology of urological diseases, as well as uh, instrumental and uh, radiological methods of diagnostics of urological diseases. I am repeating once more. Symptomatology of urological diseases and methods of instrumental and radiological investigations in urology. And now we'll continue. Urolithiasis is one of the most widespread diseases of urological patients, which doctors of different specialties encounter. Urinary calculi are the third most common affliction of the urinary tract exhibit only urinary tract infections and pathologic conditions of the prostates. The occurrence, occurrence of stone within the urinary tract is a problem that has plagued human since the beginning of recorded history. Archaeologists have uncovered urinary stones in the mummified remains of Egyptians estimated to be more than 7,000 years old. What tongue can we use for this disease? First, urinary stone disease. Next, uh, urolithiasis, urolithiasis, and nephrolithiasis. All these terms means that the patient suffers from this disease. Well, there are numerous theories of originating and development of urolithiasis. However, any of them does not explain completely its origin. Nephrolithiasis should be introduced as the disease of the whole organism caused by different disturbances of metabolic processes and formations of stone in the urinary paths with subsequent manifestations and complications. By chemical composition, we distinguish oxalate, phosphate, urate, carbonate stones. Sometimes we meet cysteine, stantine, and other more rare. Uh, 
Так, next. Epidemiology. Epidemiology. This picture demonstrates that frequency of the disease is enough high, no? uh, between 120 and 140 people per 100,000 will develop urinary stones each year. Uh, next, you can see the frequency of this disease in the United States. And uh, you can see that uh, prevalence of stone disease has risen from 3.8% till 5.2% during 10 during 20 years, in, United, in the United States, stone disease accounts for more than uh, 400,000 hospitalizations annually. It is enough to hire figures. The peak incidence is in the third to five decades. Uh, Stones form in the collecting system, the collecting system of the kidney due to a multitude of factors. Most often an imbalance of anorganic substances such as calcium, struvite, urate or cystine due to an underlying metabolic disorders leads to matrix formation in the urine. Any obstructions to urine flow can lead to stasis of the urine and increased risk of stone formation. Reduced urine volume and dehydration may tip the balance in causing stone disease due to supersaturation of the urine. Medical conditions such as Crohn's disease lead to increased level of certain substances that may be predisposed in individual to, to stone formation. The etiology of stones remains speculative. Well, for example, if urinary constituents are similar from each kidney, and if there is no evidence of obstruction, why do most stones present in unilateral fashion? Why don't small stones pass uneventfully down the ureter earlier in their development? Why do some people form one large stone and others form multiple small calculi? There is much speculating, speculating concerning this and other questions. The development of stones in the urinary tract is a complex, poor understood multifactorial process. We can divide the numerous factors contributing to stone formation into exogenous and endogenic and uh, the later into general and local. First, you can see geography. geography. Prevalence of stone disease is higher in mountainous, desert or tropical areas. Countries with uh, a high incidence of stones are the United States, British Isles, Scandinavian countries, Mediterranean countries, Northern India and Pakistan, Northern Australia, Southern Europe, Malaysia, Peninsula and Chile. Uh, reasons for geographic and climate variances are unclear. Climate, dehydration, 
and increased production of, uh, of different vitamins may also can lead to the uh, stone formation. During the stone disease, is more common in sunny, warm climates and uh, seasonally during summer months. Next, occupation, even occupation influence on the stone formation and frequency of stone formation. Uh, you know, occupation can have an impact on incidence of urinary stones. Physicians and other white color workers have an increased incidence of stone compared with the manual labors. Even social, social economic factors also take part in these questions. Affluent societies have higher rates of small upper tract stones, whereas large true white stones are more common in development countries where malnourishment and infection are common. Bladder stones tend to be more common in underdeveloped countries and may be related to de dietary habits and malnutrition. Ex diet, diet, next, you can see, diet, uh, ex excess intake of dietary sodium, oxalate, calcium, and purine increased risk, risk of stone disease. Uh, hydration, hypervitaminosis, etc. What means endogenous factors? It means you know, they may be general and local. As we said, different metabolic processes lead to uh, changes in metabolism of, and uh, composition of urine, which is predisposing factor of stone formation. For example, hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism is one of the variants of this disbalance. Uh, hormone, uh, hormone of parathyroid glands leads to changes of calcium phosphate metabolism and building material appears in urine more than in normal. Uric acid diatesis, you know that pure metabolism, uh, pure metabolism and uh, uh, ending product of this metabolism is uric acid. Hyperproduction of uric acid is predisposing factor also of stone formation. You know that other disease which also is caused by uric acid diatesis is gout. But combination of gout and uric acid stones are very rare, only in 50%. Next, hyperoxaluria, vitamin disbalance, bone fractures, about this is bone fractures. Why is it predisposing factor for stone formation? No, first of all, changes of metabolic process in organism, which is directed on uh, regeneration of stone and uh, st uh, of bone, sorry, and bone formation. On one hand, on the other hand, these patients long term are immobilized in the, and uh, you know that in horizontal position urodynamic less in 1.5 uh, time less than in the usual regime and next local uh, causes urinary obstruction as we said infection tubular fatigues Vesica ureteral reflux anomalies in all these cases, uh, disturbances of urine flow takes part. Uh, 
so any cause, any cause with uh, disturbs urine flow may be cause of stone formation. What are the most often ions in urinary? Calcium, oxalate, phosphate, uric acid, sodium, citrate, magnesium, and sulfate. Stone frequency. Most often, stones are oxalate. More than 55% are oxalate stones. Next, urate and phosphate are approximately the same, 15 to 20 percent urate, phosphate 10 to 16 percent. More rare may be carbonate and very rare cysteine stones. What can we say about the stones? Some stones formed in the acidic urine. In this uh, table, you can see these primary stones. They include oxalate, urate, uric acid, and cysteine stones. They formed in normal urinary tract due to metabolic errors. They formed in acidic urine, no central nucleus in these stones. Secondary stones include phosphate stones formed in the infected urine, so first, of first infection and secondary stone formation, formed in alkaline urine, in inflammation, urine most often is alkaline. Uh, there is central nucleus, which may be primary stone, clumps of organism, blood clots or tissue and detritus. Characteristic of stone. You can see urate, oxalate, and phosphate. No urate stone, the uh, ammonium urate or uric acid stones. Uh, uh, most often the, the number variable, size small, shape rounded, surface smooth, always color yellow or reddish brown, consistency hard and uh, cut section, no nucleus. Oxalate, calcium oxalate most often, single most often, uh, size moderate, oval, spiky, earlier symptoms, earlier symptoms due to this uh, surface. Uh, brown or black, brown or black, very hard, very and monocles. And phosphate, usually calcium phosphate, or it may be other uh, combinations. Variable number, large stones, oval, smooth. Few symptoms will it has large size. Dirty white color and hard and uh, friable. Nucleus and laminate. Uh, what about what about uh, localization? Localization may be different localization of stone. They can form from calyces, from calyces. Next, pelvis. They form in pelvis. And then they can migrate along ureter, along ureter. You can see different places when maybe stopping of the stone. No, first of all, the pilo ureteral segment, pilo ureteral segment, maybe place of uh, fixation of stones because it is first physiological narrowing. Next, maybe in place when ureter cross uh, iliac, uh, iliacal vessels, and last narrow when ureter enter into the urinary bladder. And in these places, maybe localization. 
in the urinary bladder, most often secondary stone, which are caused by uh, infravesical obstruction. When some obstruction of urethra, urethra lower than urinary blood. Most often it caused by benign tumor of uh, prostate gland, BPH. BPH. Well, uh, because if stone migrated uh, along ureter and it went out into the urinary bladder, in cases when infravesical obstruction is absent, the stone might be go out through urethra because diameter of urethra uh, more than diameter of ureter. ureter. This picture also demonstrates possible possible localization of stone. In urethra, very rare, in urethra, very rare, but it's also possible, and in this case, the situation may be complicated by acute urinary retention. When urinary bladder is over distended and patient has not independent voiding. Symptoms of urethra. Symptoms. Uh, pain is the most often symptom, and uh, depending on uh, obstruction, pain may be acute or dull pain. If urine flow is disturbed completely, when complete obstruction presence may be acute pain. And when partial obstruction pain may be dull. What stones cause more severe pain? Small stones. Why? Large stones, more than one centimeter, they are localized in the pelvis, in the pilocalicial system. They uh, disturb urine flow, but only partially. What about small stone? Small stone can obturate pilo-urethral ureteral junction along ureter also may be obstructed. And example of acute pain is a renal colic. A renal colic, I think that you already hear these symptoms and uh, it may be till 80 to 85 uh, percent. What, how does it develop? It develops very fast very fast, very quickly. Why? It, it, sometimes it may be developed on the background of complete health. For stone, when it immigrates along the ureta, it irritates uh, nerve endings which are in mucosa of ureta. Refractory spasm appeared. Refractory spasm. And uh, this spasm uh, obturates Completely ureta in place of localization of stone, complete obstruction. Kidney continue, uh, continuous excrete urine, and uh, excretion of urine is about 1 ml per minute. 1 ml per minute. Capacity of pyrocalicial system is approximately 5 to 7 ml. So, 5 to 10 minutes is enough to enlargement of pelvis twice. Distension of pyrocalicial system develops and ureter which localized upper than stone. Patient feels acute pain. First of all, the pelvis try to push this stone, to push this obstruction by, and it constricts more. Uh, but by this way, pressure in the system increased more, and pain also increased. This pain localized in the 
lumbal region, or if one point it may be angle between 12 rib and direct muscles of uh, no, in this picture you can say approximately this operation and very characteristic very characteristic radiation of this patient radiates downward in the, along the ureter in the iliacal region suprapubic region growing and even sometimes on the internal surface of thighs and such characteristic irradiation. This fast development is very important differential, differential diagnostic symptom. Later we will uh, discuss it. Next, hematuria. It may be microscopic or gross hematuria. Microscopic till 90%. Erythrocytes urea by adults. A gross hematuria may be in 20 to 25 percent of patients. And uh, the most often cause of gross hematuria is a rupture of phonical veins, which localized in the calyces of the kidney. And when changes of pressure in pyelocalicial system occurs, uh, maybe a rupture of these thin wall vessels and gross hematuria. Frequency or polacuri, you can meet this term in your textbooks, maybe till 40 to 50 percent, and more often, most often in localization of stone in distal part of the ureter. Uh, sometimes stone can migrate along the ureter, one week, two weeks, sometimes uh, when. Sizes of stone less than six five millimeters. And in one moment, uh, patient says to the doctor, from yesterday evening, for example, I feel frequent urge to go again. It may be indirect symptom that stone descended downward and localized localized near urinary bladder. Pyurea. 65 to 70 percent, most often it is a result of secondary pyelonephritis. Nausea and vomiting 10 to 40 percent, maybe as a result of refractory irritation of bowel. And passing of stones with urine, 45 to 50 percent. It may be stones or crystals. crystals. Uh, I think you know already what means patognomonic symptom. Patognomonic symptom is symptoms which is the most often in this uh, disease. By other words, only in this uh, disease, it is characteristic for this disease. And uh, this symptom, passing of stone, we can uh, call patognomonic. For example, if a patient says that he has passing of stones with the urine uh, and he has experience of this passing of stones, we can think about diagnosis of urolithiasis. Uh, next, complications of urolithiasis. The main problem is obstruction. Main problem is obstruction. And uh, long term obstruction leads to dilation of ureter and pyelocalicial system. It leads to uh, hydronephrosis, hydronephrosis, the extension of pyelocalicial system, hydroureter of ureter. Well, Infection, infection, it is secondary pyelonephritis most often due to stagnation of urine and it leads to pyelonephritis, pyelonephrosis, ascending pyelonephritis to the other side also. 
other stone formation also, stone migration, and post-renal anuria, post-renal anuria in cases of bilateral obstruction. When uh, from both uh, sides obstruction presence, no, for example, right and left ureta is obstructed. Because if only one side will be obstructed, other kidney will excrete urine. Uh, post renal anuria, it is very serious obstruction. Renal failure, renal failure is a result of long-term obstruction and long-term uh, infection, which leads to uh, atrophy, gradual atrophy of parenchyme. And uh, I'll demonstrate you a picture in which you, you can see this process. Well, in this picture you can see uh, kidney, kidney, Upper, upper half of kidney is not affected and lower part, lower part you can see you, uh, the dilation of the calyces, dilation of the calyces, hydrocalycosis and atrophy of parenchyme, the gradual atrophy of parenchyme. What demonstrative is in this uh, case looks pyelocalicial system is filled by this stone and small stones are in the calyces. So you can see that functional parenchyme is absent because sclerotic processes, sclerotic processes leads to uh, atrophy, uh, to atrophy and sclerosis of this parenchyme and gradually kidney loss its function, its function. Next picture you can see the, you can see the thin layer the, of parenchyme and sclerotic tissues and the vacuum parenchyme is absent probably in this case. And stone intercalysis. In this picture you can see so-called stack Horn stone, stack horn stone. It uh, picture similar that this that because these parts of uh, this stone they localize in the calyces. This part localized in the pelvis. This stone was removed during the operation. This part of stone was removed. Through incision of pelvis, this part of stone was removed through incision of parenchyme. Name of this operation pylo nephro Also, example of stack horn stone. Stack horn stone. Approximately 1.5 inches. And also this part was in the pelvis, this part, this part in dilated calyces. It is phosphate stone. Most often stackhorn stone are phosphate. This picture you can see example of post renal anuria. Post renal anuria. This shadow, this shadow, it is a large stone which localized in the distal part of the ureter. And it reached these sizes in this place and this place. And long-term obstruction of the right kidney leads to loss of function. The right kidney is not functional kidney totally. Left side, left side, this shadow, shadow of stone. Obturation of ureta occurs and bilateral obstruction. You can see shadow of ureteral catheter which was inserted into the ureter for restoring of urine flow. In the cases of uh, postrenal anuria, we must restore 
your claw by any way. Or maybe through your reader, if it's possible to insert up at an obstruction. If it's impossible, uh, percutaneous nephrostomia performs for drainage of kidney. Diagnostics of urolithiasis. Well, first of, of all, complaints and history. Our scientists said that still 50% of information in diagnostics we can receive from a detailed interrogation of patient. We must ask him about symptoms, about history, about what, by what way it developed that is disease, uh, what manifestations, what actions were, uh, were performed, diagnostic treatment, etc., etc. Physical examination. By during physical examination, you can determine uh, areas with pain there. Well, and uh, to, it is very important in differential diagnostic of renal colic and acute surgical diseases of abdominal cavity. Laboratory investigation, urine and blood. Now, first of all, we can determine uh, signs of inflammatory process in, in blood, for example. We can determine changes uh, in urine which are characteristic for urolithiasis, such as uh, microscopical hematuria, proteinuria, leukocyturia, crystalluria, depending on uh, uh, variant of crystal, we can, we can suspect each other stones. For example, in case of oxaluria, we think about oxalate stone. If we can see uh, uric acid crystals, so it, it is indirect symptom that patient has uric acid stone. Analysis of any stone past, it is very important because uh, for prophylaxis of this disease, we must recommend to patient each other uh, diet, uh, different drugs for prevention, uh, for prevention of uh, recidive of this disease. Uh, most often, no, most often we can analyze uh, stones which pass through independently or which were removed during uh, operative or instrumental methods of treatment. Ultrasonography is very important. It is non-invasive method of diagnostic and enough informative, enough informative method. We can determine uh, stones of the uh, kidney from four to five millimeters and uh, and more. Uh, uh, next, plain X-ray, cube field X-ray without contrast substance. We can determine shadow of stone. We can determine localization of the stone, uh, sizes of stone, etc. It is very important investigation and in diagnostic of urolithiasis. We will say that uric acid stones are non-opaque stones. They, uh, they don't uh, give shadows on stone. And uh, for determining of the uric acid stone, it is very important. If we cannot see shadow on plain film uh, and receive direct symptoms in excretory urography. In this case, we can be sure that the stone really urate and treatment may be very specific. Excretory urography. Excretory urography means, uh, sorry, I will, tell you. I will tell you about excretory urography when I demonstrate picture. 
retrograde ascending ureter of pyelography, when we introduce contrasubstance upward through ureter to pelvis. Cystoscopy, cystoscopy, ureteroscopy, uh, and uh, uh, radiological investigation allows us to estimate urine flow and uh, CT scanning and MRI, these modern methods, which allows us to determine these stones. In this picture, you can see stone of the kidney and shadow behind it. Also, this film, film demonstrates kidney, kidney, and uh, stone which localizes in the pelvis behind it. Shadow, shadow or echo free zone. We can call it also echo free zone or shadow behind this stone. Uh, this picture demonstrates also stone of the kidney. You can see parenchyme, parenchyme, and stone and shadow behind this stone. Uh, in this film, you can see a small stone which localized in the orifice of the ureter, cavity of the ureter bladder, and uh, stone of the orifice of the ureter. It's a plain field. You can see shadow in projection of the kidney, but this film allows us only suspect stone. Why? Because uh, different other uh, formation can give the same shadow, such as stone of the cold blood, foreign bodies in the bar, petrificated lymph nodes, petrificated tumor, petrificated cyst of the kidney, etc. And so we can only suspect that in projection of right kidney, shadow presence such, sizes such, shape, etc. Next, in this case, more uh, information that it is stone, we, we can see kidney, we can see very clear kidney, and the uh, shape of this shadow is the same as pelvis, the triangle shape of this uh, shadow. So, bilateral stack horn stones, bilateral stack horn stones, you can see shape as bilateral system. This part localized in the pelvis, also here, and this part localized and in a bilateral system. And uh, uh, bilateral stack horns, they, uh, they uh, fill a whole cavity of bilateral system. Why do they reach such sizes? Because they develop without pain. As you remember, we said that large stone localized in the bilateral system and they this stops urine flow of the partial, and so maybe some is uh, dull pain, and sometimes patient thinks that they cause by radiculitis. Also, stack on stone in the kidney, and you can see it's a removed stack on stone. Uh, and this film we can this stone of the ureter and, and uh, stent was inserted into the bilocalitial system for drainage of left urinary parts. Stone of, stone of the ureter becomes a shadow in urethra, urethra. Very rare, but it's possible also. And uh, this picture demonstrates excretory urography. Intravenously, we introduced contrast substance, con uh, 
iodine drugs, different iodine drugs, uh, which uh, uh, excretes from the organism through urinary system. They excrete it by kidney, and when this contrast substance uh, excretes through ureter, we can see it on the film. Uh, you can see biolocalitional system and ureter. Urine with the contrast substance gives shadow and we can see structure of the urinary parts. Stone of the urinary bladder, stone of the urinary bladder. The same patient, excretory urography, we can see biocalitical system, ureter, which is not this extended left side also you can see this picture multiple stones of the urinary bladder you can see also that this patient has artificial germs artificial germs uh, next Sometimes the sizes of urinary blood of stone reach huge sizes. In this picture, approximately 8 or 9 centimeters. But in our days, it is a very rare situation because uh, diagnostic um, uh, might be earlier uh, than minimal symptoms, presence. Maybe ultrasonic investigation performs and successfully maybe diagnose this stone. In this picture, you can see a huge stone which formed the ureter. In ureter, in this case, disturbances of urine flow were present, and secondary stone formed in the distal part of the ureter. Excretory urography compared with left side, normal biolocalitial system, normal ureter. Right side we can see distension, dilation of the biolocalitial system as well as ureter. It's also dilated. Where is cause? Here, small stone, small stone about four to five millimeter caused such uh, uh, marked dilation, ureteral hydronephrosis. In this film you can see shadow kidney, right left kidney, left kidney, right kidney, and approximately near pelvis for uh, some of shadow presence. What must we do next? We must perform any uh, investigation with the contrast substance and compare projection of this shadow and urinary paths which are filled by contrast substance. Next film look with the same patient, this excretory urography. We can see that this stone uh, localized near pelvis. Pay attention, passage resins such of urine presence, obstruction is partial, and so distension of pyrocalitial system is not marked, is not marked. This film is retrograde pyrography. When special ureteral catheter was inserted through urinary bladder in the, in the through ureter and Contrast substance was introduced in the biolocalitial system, and we can see filling defect. You can see filling defect, uh, filling defect of the pelvis. It is large stone, non opaque stone of the pelvis, urate stone. Uh, urate. Most of the non opaque stone is urate or uric acid stone. Uh -huh. In this film, it demonstrates. Problems in diagnostic of ureteral stone. Shadow possible stone because projection of distal part of the ureter. 
In excretory urography, projection of the shadow and the ureter, which is filled by contrasubstance, the same. But when we perform other investigation, it is filled the same patient. Uh, we ins inserted uh, ureteral catheter and perform film. The same projection, but when we perform film in lateral projection, lateral projection. This shadow went out from the ureter and by this way we confirm that it is not stone of the ureter. This film you can see. Uh, stone, bilateral stones, the kidneys. CT scanning, CT scanning uh, demonstrates bilateral stones of the pelvis and dilation of pylon conditions is also visible on this film. Differential diagnosis, it is a very important question in uh, urolithiasis, especially in cases of uh, renal colic, renal colic. Why? Renal colic it is acute situation which required agent action. Then it is very severe pain. But the same pain or similar pain, similar pain may be in cases of acute uh, abdomen, acute abdomen, the surgical disease, which includes acute appendicitis, acute polycystitis. Perforated ulcer of stomach or of duodenum, acute bowel obstruction, acute ileus, acute pancreatitis, clottage of mesenteric vessels, ectopic pregnancy in females, twisted ovarian cysts in females, acute renal artery embolism. Why it is so important? Uh, for every doctor. If we decided, for example, that patient has renal colic, what will we do? We will try to remove this pain. We, might, we will try to arrest renal colic. What will we use? We will use analgesics, spasmolytics. We will use hot water bottle, for example or hot baths, these actions can, uh, in, uh, can uh, increase speed of development of the disease, on, other hand. On, a, uh, on one hand. On the other hand, when we use analgesics and spasmolytics, in case of appendicitis, for example, or polycystitis, what happens? Pain disappears pain disappeared rarely, but such serious complication as peritonitis will develop without any symptoms. And uh, we cannot uh, determine it in time, Some, because a few hours it will develop without any manifestation. It is very serious. And uh, remember, this renal colic is very, uh, see, it, it is an uh, uh, unpleasant situation. It is very pain, but from renal colic, patient will not die. But uh, when patient will have peritonitis and will be diagnosed not in time, maybe a very serious complication till death of the patient. What are differences? Acute appendicitis, we will discuss only acute appendicitis. First of all, we can see it distantly, and we can see that diagnosis of renal colic may be uh, suspect distantly. Patient is restless in renal colic. All time he changed his position and he tried to find position which decrease the pain. And so all time he changed his position. In appendicitis, 
patient takes one position most often right side no, on the right side and with the flexed legs uh, we said that renal colic develops very quickly very fast appendicitis develops gradually appendicitis in appendicitis uh, hypertermia, hypertermia, hypertermia the temperature 37, so fibro, we can say, so fibro temperature, 37.2, 37.6 in renal colic, not only in cases when renal colic is complicated by uh, acute pyelonephritis, maybe temperature. Next, uh, nausea vomiting, maybe in both cases, in renal colic and in appendicitis, different. Changes in urine, we said that sometimes maybe microscopic or even gross hematuria in, in appendicitis is very rare, maybe changes in dysuric manifestation, dysuric manifestation such as frequency, more characteristic for renal colic and appendicitis, very rare. In, cholecyst in cholecystitis, very uh, important radiation in, uh, in appendicitis, pain spreads upward, supraclavicular, the supra, uh, scapula of the region, uh, and uh, shoulders, and in renal colic, always down. Uh, we said only what are the places of this radiation. And so you must remember, if you have not if you are not sure, no, at, at least 70% that patient has renal colic, don't try to arrest it. Don't try to arrest it. Because, uh, I said you already, maybe different complications in peritonitis. Next, uh, next, the treatment, no, we can divide different kinds of treatment, maybe conservative treatment, maybe instrumental treatment, maybe operative treatment, different kinds of treatment. No, first, diet. Diet depends on the stone composition. As you remember, I said it is very important knowledge on chemical structure of the stone there, and we must perform analysis, chemical analysis of stone, and it allows us to choose necessary diet. If patient uh, has, for example, uh, uric acid stone or excellent stone, we will recommend him a diet which increased pH of urine. Uh, uric acid stones formed in the uh, urine with pH 4.5, 5.5. Oxalate 5.1, 5.8. And uh, phosphate stone forms in the alkaline urine. So, in uric acid stone, for example, we will try to increase pH of uh, urine. In cases of phosphate stone, we will try to decrease pH, so we will use these drugs. We must recommend to patients with uric acid stone for uh, diet without purine, such as coffee, chocolate, beans, etc. Sanatorium therapy, it includes uh, different uh, mineral water, which also depends on chemical structure. In uh, uh, acidic urine, in acidic stones, we will use uh, mineral water, which leads to alkalization of urine and opposite in cases of phosphate stone we will use uh, mineral waters which uh, 
leads to acidification of urea. Next, promotion of stone expulsion, of hydration and terpene drugs. What does it mean? No. Uh, we try to recommend, to increase uh, diuresis, diuresis if the usual diuresis is about 1.5 liter. In these cases, we recommend to patient to intake more than two liters of water, more than two liters of water, because uh, uh, increased diuresis leads to migration of small stone, which we, in cases when we uh, hope that may be independent passing of stone, in cases when sizes of stone not more than 6 to 7 mm. Well, terpene drugs, what means terpene drugs? It is uh, plant drugs, plant drugs, which have combined, uh, combined action. They, are, they have diuretics action, spasmolytics action, sedative action, and uh, small uh, anti-inflammatory action. Next, normalization of metabolic process. Now, in this uh, picture, you can see allopurine. What means that? This drug decreased uh, production of uric acid. We said that, that uh, uric acid is an end product of uh, pure metabolism. If production of uric acid decreased, so decreased building material in urine. Da, and possibility of uh, stone formation decreased. The solution of stones, uh -huh. no, only urea stones, no, or uric acid stones, may be dissolved, only these stones. We already said that the main uh, result of chemical compos composition, the chemical analysis. Next, they are non-opaque, in the urine, you, we can find uh, uric urea and, and, and other uh, indirect symptoms uh, allows us to think that stone is uric acid. Uh -huh. And one of the most important also, I didn't tell you, uh, pH 4.5 till 5.5, acidic urine. In these cases, we can use such drugs as Uralitu, Blemarem. Uh, they lead to uh, alkalization, but not only alkalization, because uh, the solution of stone, but this mechanism is very complex. And uh, but you must remember that only urate stone we can dissolve. And anti-inflammatory anti therapy, anti-inflammatory therapy uh, leads. To decreasing of pyelonephritis, which uh, is uh, complicates uh, urolytosis very often. Uh, next, arresting of renal COVID. No, it is one of the actions in treatment of the uh, urolytosis. We said that we already discussed in detail what mechanism of renal COVID. It is acute obstruction, acute obstruction of uh, urinary parts, acute obstruction. And uh, all our action might be directed on restoring of urine. And I didn't tell you uh, also in diagnostic, in diagnostic also of renal COVID, in renal COVID, we must estimate urine flow. No, we discussed, as you remember, we discussed uh, differential diagnostic. If urine flow is disturbed, so we think about renal COVID. If it is normal, in these cases, we can exclude renal COVID, and so we must use any investigation which allows us to estimate urine flow. So, if the main problem 
which cost of your uh, renal product is at your disturbances of urine flow. We must restore it by any ways. Hot water bottle, hot bath leads to decreasing to, of spasm of smooth muscles of ureter or smooth muscles of the pelvis and by this way maybe a restoring of urine flow. Spasmolytics and sedative analgesics. Spasmolytics and sedative analgesics. Also they remove spasm, they remove spasm and uh, uh, analgetic, analgesic effect also. Sometimes if it is not enough maybe use narcotic analgesics but narcotic analgesics we can use only in in patient department in patient departments next novocaine blockade lorin abstains blockade that helps lorin abstain blockades uh, it is a blockade of a spermatic cord in males and round ligament in female. This type of uh, blockade may be effective in cases of uh, distal localization of the uh, distal localization of stone. Uh, in the uh, lower third of the ureter, for example, when it localized near the urinary bladder. No, how must how can we perform this blockade? We must palpate in the spermatic cord in the area of root of scrotum. We palpate it, perform punction of uh, spermatic cord. First, novocaine behind it, needle direction of external rim of the uh, inguinal canal and we introduce about 40 ml of novocaine. Next catheterization, catheterization of the ureter. If conservative measures are non-effective when we catheterize the renal product, we perform of the ureter. How does it perform? We perform cystoscopy, a special cystoscope with the canal and special guide which directs uh, catheter in the orifice of the ureter. We perform inserting this ureteral catheter into the ureter. And uh, gradually, gradually we sort it outward. And when we meet obstruction, if small stone, we try insert this instrument upper than stone. If we insert it catheter upper than stone, this catheter will function as drainage, as drainage, and urine which was accumulated upper than stone and distended ureter and the pyrocalicial system, this urine will be drainage, it will, it will uh, excrete it, discharge through catheter and uh, renal colic disappears immediately, immediately. Catheterization of the ureter. Uh, Sometimes, sometimes, very rare, we cannot insert catheter up than this obstruction. Maybe such cases. In these cases, we will perform percutaneous nephrostomia. Percutaneous nephrostomia. Next. Okay, 
Integrations to Sorgital Intervention. Так. Ну, Incontrollable Marked Pain, which doesn't allow the patient normally live and work. Fine. Next. Large sizes of the stone, more than 8 millimeters. Also, it's indication for operative treatment. Next, non-effective conservative treatment. Well, for example, you hope that small stone it can uh, go, can pass through urinary paths independently, but long-term treatment is not effective. Or, for example, you decided to uh, perform uh, little uh, lithosis, uh, dissolution of stone, but from two, three months, as you perform this treatment, without effect. Understandable. Next, marked obstruction by the stone of the urinary paths with, uh, with development of hydrometrosis. I demonstrated you in the macro preparates, I demonstrated you uh, X-ray films with the marked dilation of the urinary paths. In these cases, to prevent progressive the development of hydronephrosis and atrophy of parenchyme and loss in the function of the kidney with the, uh, the development of renal insufficiency that we must perform operative treatment. Next, organic encumbrance, encumbrances for outflow of urine strictures, anomalies of development, etc. No, if stricture present, it is narrowing of the ureter, for example, which was developed uh, during long-term inflammation, or maybe uh, con uh, congenital sometimes strictures, and predisposing factor for stone formation remains in this case, uh, and only operative treatment and operative correction of urinary parts uh, can help to prevent next time formation of the stone or uh, different uh, operation in cases of anomalies of development when constant uh, chronic obstruction of urinary parts present. Next uh, gross hematuria, gross hematuria, long-term gross hematuria also is one of the indications for operative treatment. Acute pyelonephritis caused by the stone, especially in cases when acute, acute pyelonephritis, uh, uh, which leads to purulent form such as uh, apostematous pyelonephritis, carbuncle of the kidney, abscess of the kidney, etc. And uh, uh, such complication as calculus post renal anuria also required urgent actions. We must perform immediately uh, restoring of outflow by any way, first of all, if it is possible, by catheterization of urinary parts. Uh, if it is not effective, we must perform percutaneous nephrostomy, drainage of pyrocalicial system by tube which was inserted uh, through function percutaneous function uh, and if these actions are non-effective also sometimes we must perform uh, open operative treatment or instrumental 
uh, or endoscopic object, I'm sorry. Well, this picture demonstrates you uh, dormia basket. On the left, the left picture, you can see stone which fixated by this basket and picture of the basket. When this basket is in the catheter, in the catheter, when we insert catheter upper than stone, we push uh, push this basket and it opens upper than stone and traction downwards, traction downwards leads to fixation of this stone and evacuation. Uh, uh, you can see also forceps, special forceps, which we can insert by visual control. Well, for example, we use a ureteroscope and by this uh, control we can fixate small fragments of stone, of small stones by these forceps and evacuate outside. Uh, you can see X-ray picture. This, uh, you can see stone which fixated by this uh, dormia basket in distal part of the ureter. And next, uh, gradual uh, traction downward leads to evacuation of this stone. In this picture, you can see. It. Stone of the ureter, stone of the ureter. Uh, this picture we can see through ureteroscope, and in this case, you, you can see fixation of the stone of the ureter by special forceps. Uh -huh. uh, this picture demonstrates inserting of nephrostoma, punctual nephrostomia, under ultrasonic control most often performs puncture of the pelvis and then uh, through special, special equipment and so tube, tube, which right picture you can see this tube localized in the pelvis and special loop, special loop material with the memory of this nephrostoma. Fixates, fixates nephrostoma in pelvis, in pelvis. Open stone surgery, open stone surgery. Different operations may be performed depending on localization of, uh, of uh, stone. First, pilot liter What means pyelolithotomia? It is uh, not may. What means pyelotomia? Pyelotomia is incision of pelvis. Yeah? Pyelotomy. Pylos, a Greek term of pelvis. Uh, pyelolithotomia means that stone removes through incision of the pelvis. What means nephrolithotomia? When incision performs through parenchyma of the kidney. I demonstrated you Stockholm stone. When one part was removed through pelvis, other part was removed through incision of uh, parenchyma. Nephrolithotomia. Ne Nephrectomy, partial or total. Or if at atrophy of parenchyma, Atrophy of parenchyma is already present, especially in purulent inflammation, sometimes perform partial or total nephrectomy. Total nephrectomy, you understand, might be performed only at the last resort. Ureterolithotomy, when stone localized ureter, and systolithotomy, removing of stone from the urinary blood. In this picture you can see incision of pelvis and gradual removal of stone. Also variants remove nephrotomia, incision of the uh, 
not, not only a pelvis, but also parent and you can see this picture there. Removing of stone from the pelvis, pyelitotomy, pyelitotomy in this case, nephrolitotomy, when stone removed through incision of parenchyme from the upper calyx. You can see kidney which was removed. You can see it is a long term process leads to at atrophy of parenchyme and loss of all function. You can see the stone, pelvis and stone, and in this case, pelvis without stone already. Uh, last 40 years, last 40 years, uh, new methods was, uh, development of new methods of lithotripsy, what means lithotripsy, it is crushing of stone, crushing of stone. Maybe two types of lithotripsy, maybe uh, content lithotripsy or distant lithotripsy or extracorporal short wave lithotripsy. What means contact lithotripsy? When contact presence between stone and uh, special probe, special contact presence. Uh, uh, so, sorry, special contact between the uh, source of uh, shock waves and stone. <clears throat> we insert this probe till stone by visual control, for example, cystoscope, ureteroscope, <clears throat> nephroscope. We apply it and perform uh, action on this stone. We can use electrohydraulic effect electrohydraulic effect, <coughs> laser effect, Holmium yak laser, pneumatic, not jackhammer effect, uh, drilled, ultrasonic and mechanical. So in these cases we apply this source to stone. Now well, the most uh, effective laser, last, uh, last time most effective laser, Lithotripsia. What means extracorporal, extracorporal shortwave lithotripsia? First of all, this source, source of shock waves localized outside of the body, outside of the body. It may be uh, next physical effects, electrohydraulic also, electromagnetic and piezoelectric. In our lessons we will discuss in detail, but the main principle of this method is uh, focus uh, of these waves on the stone. Focus. Because what problem? Waves might be, forces of these waves might be enough for crushing of stone, but when they go through tissues, they must not damage it. Problem. How did this problem was decided? Focus, focus. Uh, when I'll show just one picture moment. Look, please. Uh, source of these uh, waves localized here. A special uh, a spheric S mirror, S mirror. The, reflector, special reflector, and uh, uh, when we switch on this source, waves which goes on the surface of this mirror, they will be reflected and they will go in one point. Every wave, when it goes through tissues, they don't damage it as well as it cannot destroy stone. But when they goes to this focus, their force is summarized and occurs enough for crushing of stone. It is principle of this method. The moment I go back. Так. Uh, not very contact lithotripsia, for 
example, uh, ureteroscope, ureteroscope insults into the ureter till stone, and then we apply it to stone and perform extraction. Uh, percutaneous nephrolithotomy. What means percutaneous nephrolithotomy? When we perform, when we insert uh, needle, then puncture uh, by needle by our collision system, special technology presents to dilate this canal, and then we introduce uh, nephroscope, and uh, uh, through this nephroscope we uh, uh, insert uh, probe, special probe, and we can use any variant of contact ligotripsy. Uh, Collisional access, dilation, nephroscopy, ligotripsy, uh, removal of stone fragments from the kidney forceps and nephrostomy. And now I will demonstrate you. Look, please. People, it's, it is a picture of nephroscope which applies to the stone and by special probe performs corrosion. Other variants, ultrasonic generation, uh, and applies this uh, probe to stone and performs corrosion. No, and gradual picture. Look, please. Second stone, for example, or yeah, multiple stone. We perform puncture by needle. Then we introduce through needle special guide. Special guide. Pay attention. Uh, ureter is operated by a special catheter, which with the bell, which doesn't allow for uh, fragments pass through the ureter. Next picture, you can see performs dilation of this canal, gradual dilation of canal and introduction of nephroscope. You can see that nephroscope is inserted, the pavis, and then we use any variants of uh, generation of pavis for contact lithotripsy. After that, we perform, you can see, small fragment, they are removed by special forceps outside and then uh, nephrostomia, nephrostomia remains uh, in the uh, pelvis, remains in the pelvis for drainage a few days. In this case, by flexible system, ureteroscope inserts special equipment till stone and performs corrosion. Well, no, uh, you can see this uh, variant, uh, 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 variant of uh, extracorporal, the scheme of uh, extracorporal lithotripsy. Well, and now I wanted to tell you that in cases of extracorporal lithotripsy, stone doesn't vaporize, stone doesn't. Uh, dissolves, it uh, crushes into the small fragments, small fragments, and if these fragments are enough small, they can pass through independently uh, along the ureter by normal uh, urinary paths outside. But if sizes of these uh, fragments are large, maybe obstruction, obstruction of this a ureter, for example, and uh, may be complicated by renal colic, acute pyelonephritis, and etc. And this situation required uh, instrumental removal of these uh, fragments by inserting special instrument through urinary blood or through ureter, fixation by forceps, and evacuation these fragments outside. And so, in all these cases, might be necessary equipment if such complication appeared to perform this action. And sometimes maybe started from distant lithotripsy, but if large fragments operate, operate stone, it may be transformed into the contact lithotripsy in these cases. Well, and uh, now, now, more than 85% of the patients which require operative treatment may be operated by this uh, uh, 
type of treatment lithotripsia only in cases we, if organic strictures present or other organic uh, disturbances of urine flow. Uh, in these cases, the, uh, uh, lithotripsy is contraindicated. Also, in pregnant women, we cannot perform lithotripsy, also contraindicated. Well, this picture demonstrated corruption of stone. Uh, no, also, you, you can see crushing of stones and next uh, migration through urethra. Ultrasound shock waves crush stones. No, but ultrasound uh, may, be used, may be used only in case of contact with a tripsia. Well, in this picture, you can see uh, treatment for distant with a tripsia. More detail, we will discuss it in our lessons. Our lecture is over. Uh, see you in our lessons. Goodbye.